Hey everybody, welcome back. If um, if you've been following along, good to see you again. If this is your first time here, you're late. Um, there's another episode just before this. You can go and watch um, about cutting and mounting shells. Right, so today we're going to look at preparation of the body shell and masking of the body shell. Um, and again, things like this, it depends how far you want to get into with it, whether you're going for a, a single colour paint job or you're going to get something more, slightly more interesting. Um, so what I'll do, I have a first person view hat. We'll hook up to that shortly. Um, I'll show you through the process I've been using. Now, with this, I feel it's necessary to point out um, I've seen people do all sorts of crazy things, scuffing the whole inside of the body shell, cleaning it with lighter fluid, you know, lots of things. I'm going to show you what I've been using for the last 30 years. Um, and if you want proof of how it works, you know, this is low C double X um, painted in period. For me, so when was that? It must be 25 years ago. Um, and apart from a few wear issues, the paint's still on, the paint's still tight. That's a buggy body shell, it doesn't get much abuse. That's a touring car body shell from the same period. If you can see from the creases and the cracks in there, and the crack of the head out actually, that's had a fair amount of abuse. Paint's still perfect on it, um, bar the occasional wear and accident damage bits and pieces. Paint's still there, paint's still grand. That again, low C triple XS, so oh, you can do the maths and figure out how old this is. You know, that's all the proof you'll need, preparation like this. It's simple, easy, fast, and it works. Let's get to it. Okay, welcome to my bathroom or I mean, let's face it, at best the 90s. Um, if you like, subscribe, comment, get all your friends to do the same. At some point, maybe I can update this bathroom. That'll be awesome. Um, but yeah, what can you do? And also, for the guys who wonder why they've never seen me in a hat, this is why you've never seen me in a hat. There you go. Anyway, right, so dead easy. In a normal bathroom with a beautiful shell type sink. <laughs> right. So what we're going to do is hot water, just like that. One old but clean sponge. Um, I say old because I've just used it for years. Fine. And very liquid. I mean, this is dead simple. The when the bodies are molded, they're molded with the release agent on them to get them off the. To get them off the mold, the injection, the vacuum forming mold. Okay, what is easily available and designed specifically to break down oil and grease? Dishwasher soap. Very liquid in the UK. I don't know, it's whatever it is elsewhere. Warm water helps it work as well. Um, but a clean sponge, lots of very liquid. Get it wet, get it on the body shelf. Make sure you get it everywhere. All the little awkward nooks and crannies are where the oil is going to be sitting. Um, so it is just a matter of really, really, really going at it with this. Um, you don't need to scratch it, don't need to score it, don't need to do anything with it. The paints are formulated to work on Lexan, they're formulated to bond the Lexan. There is no issue being, you don't need any other prep work other than having a clean surface to go on. I can't quite uh, repeat this enough. I mean, you know, People come in and the windscreens are cloudy and rubbish because they've scored and scored and scored at them. What you've done there is you've scored the body shell, you've made loads of little nooks and crannies for the oil and the grease and everything else to hide in. That's all you've done. So you've basically ensured, no matter how well you clean the body shell afterwards, it's not going to be clean. The oil's got somewhere to hide. Um, so yeah, wheel arches obviously what gets the most abuse, make absolutely sure they're clean. Um, and just like I say, lash the fairy liquid onto it and work from there. Um, if you live with the other half, live with your mum, do the dishes for her. Um, 
furry liquid will the furry liquid will actually pull the oil and stuff out of your hands um, and make them clean too so it means you're not transferring grubby oily fingerprints onto the body shell um, and your mum would be really really impressed because what you're going to do next probably won't make her happy <laughs> um, but yeah that's that's it that's the body shell like I say if mm, there's always going to be somebody who'll say I didn't wash that we arch 93 times like the other one um, but you know we did this long enough all good again warm water Make sure my hands are clean as well. Warm water and just rinse it. Oh yeah. Get all the important thing is now to get all the soap off it because again, although the fairy liquid's done all the good work of breaking down the oil, you don't want to leave it on the body shell because if you've ever stepped in it, you will know that it's uh somewhat slippery so yeah um rinse it again the bubbles give you a nice visual cue as to what's happening when you think it's clean rinse it again when you think that's done does no harm to run it under the water once more two ways of doing this now you can leave it to dry or you can grab a towel not not a paper towel something that won't leave any dust and debris on the body shell that's now a clean painting surface and you want to keep it as close to that as you can keep your fingers away from the inside as much as you can your fingers have oils and greases in them um, and yeah do what you can to get that sorted out and get that all off so right we're gonna leave that there to air dry um, and yeah we'll Cut to the next scene. I love you, man. The hot. Okay, so with that done, the shell now cleaned, dried, everything's wonderful in the world again. Um, remembering to keep your greasy mitts off the inside of the shell as much as possible. We'll get on to masking. Um, so we grab our masking tape here. Okay, peel off a little tiny bit, just just about an inch square. And mask up the holes because honestly in this day and age why would you mask the inside of a body shell with tape um something i was asked about a couple of times and i don't see the reason why you wouldn't i use liquid mask everybody who paints uses liquid mask and the reason is it's just simple yes you can use tape if you want usual rules to keep your hands away as much as you can um tape it up don't leave any cracks any crevices anything else but liquid masks beautiful it goes on the only downside is drying time um but it goes on there are no way it can leak there's no crevice underneath it'll not peel up but you don't want it to dead easy i personally because i'm always doing three four five at a time I always spread on if you're doing a couple of shells a year it's maybe worth looking into if you've got a compressor already for the airbrush i mean i i have a 1.7 1 1.7 1.8 um either or as big a nozzle as you can get um i have a cd spray gun i think it cost me 20 quid um 10 years ago um and it's it's used spray the beauty of it but it's spraying is it's a completely level surface um, with a large diameter nozzle you can actually just get away with nearly one coat on it um, but yeah but if you're going to do if you don't want to get into that there's a solution get your freshly clean body shell boom. get your liquid mask of your preferred brand um, there are slight differences with them I've used most of the ones available in the UK at this point um, there are slightly differences if I had to pick one 
I like the RCS liquid mask. Um, the clinic one's good. The e design one obviously is good. Um, I haven't had a bad example with any of the liquid masks. Um, the only thing I would say to you is, if you're doing lots of body shells, big tub, bigger big tub. Um, if you're only doing a couple of body shells every now and again, get yourself a little tub. As soon as that seal's broken, these can these can actually get mold on them, uh, which just renders them useless. Anyway, so how do we do this without a spray can? We uh, shake the life out of it. That's probably enough. <sighs> then we get creative. Yoink. Obviously this would only spread so far. You're better off to put too little on and have to go again um, than put too much on because it turns into like a swimming pool. You'd be surprised how much it takes to actually cover a body shell. Um, right, so that, obviously, weeding it about like that will only get you so far. It's cool to watch though. Um, so we need something to spread it around. This doesn't really matter. Sponge, brush, you know, if your wife, girlfriend, partner has annoyed you, <laughs> you know, one of our makeup sponges um, will work. I mean, I didn't recommend that, um, but you know, <laughs> let me know how you get along if you do. Um, but yeah, so I've grabbed the joys of, of young children. Um, I grabbed the, the crappiest brush I could find out of their making and doing set, made sure it was clean, and just get into it and spread it around. Dead easy. Bum, 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 bum. Get yourself all messy and stuff, and it's fun. <sighs> bum, 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 bum. Just the important thing is make sure everything's covered, make sure it's all fairly uniform, make sure it gets into every crease, every every little nook and cranny. Um, this needs to seal, essentially. Plus, the thinner you put it on, the faster it will dry. Um, in my experience, if you are going to use the brush technique or the sponge technique, you're probably two or three coats, realistically. You can absolutely whack it on if you want to, but you will be waiting for days for it to dry. Um, if you're sensible with it, put it on in thin coats, try to get as few of the little drippity droppity bits everywhere um, as possible and you know it'll dry realistically within the hour um, dry enough to put your second coat on so yeah um, please if you're doing this in the house in the kitchen table like I am put something down like my pit mat because that on your good dining table will cause ructions and I don't want to be involved with it. I have enough problems with my wife. I don't need your wife shouting at you too. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically the height of this side of things. It's not very exciting. Um, I can't have the radio on because I'm commentating on this. So, but yeah, it's, that's, that's about as exciting as it gets. Um, no point in you watching this. I'll get you back later. Right, so that's the first coat on that. Um, it looks terrible, it always does. Um, let that dry. The beauty of liquid mask is that when it dries, it dries translucent. So you'll see the pink will get very light, um, for example, with the bitty mask. Um, the pink will get very, very light. At that point, you're ready for the second coat and third coat. Um, same rules as with washing the body shell. When you think it's done, add one more. There is nothing more frustrating than putting too little liquid mask on a body shell and having to pick little tiny, tiny bits off because it doesn't peel off in one uniform stroke. Um, so yeah, so that's that ready to rock. Basically, we, we leave that to dry, leave it in our radiator, come back, do another one, do another one, do another one. You know, it's not exciting. We don't need to watch it. Um, but yeah, we'll go from there and then we'll get on to the slightly more interesting cutting stuff so we'll go from there cheers